Very good afternoon. Thank you so much for being here in person and also welcome to everybody online. Um, thank you very much to Shotaro san, also to Julianne, Simon, Federica, and everybody at Japan House London for inviting me here to say a few words about today's film and its director. So I'm not going to give away too much about the film. There'll be no plot spoilers, but I will say you've got a treat ahead of you in its pacing, in its narrative twists and turns, and in its really precise portrayal of emotion. And I'm going to suggest a few words into the film and the director's style. Think of them a bit like signposts um, to elements of his, his filmmaking approach, what makes him tick, what makes his film so understated and I think enthralling. And then if you see any of his other films, and I hope that you will, you might remember some of these signposts. But first of all, who is the director, Ryusuke Hamaguchi? Well, he came from Kanagawa, based in Tokyo now. This is where he studied film. Uh, he's 43 years old. This is him. Um, he shot to acclaim in 2015 with a film he made called Happy Hour. Despite its title, Happy Hour is actually over five hours long. <laughs> now, I'm quite unforgiving with film lengths, but Happy Hour worked a strange kind of magic on me, and I wasn't alone. It did incredibly well at Locarno Film Festival, and since then, Hamaguchi has been a, a familiar face, uh, nominated and winning awards at Cannes, Berlin, Rotterdam, New York, all these film festivals, and then two, three weeks ago, he won a Golden Globe for the film we're going to see today. Hamaguchi's films are all dramas. They're about life, love, hope, hatred. They're extremely captivating. Something about their really reserved pace means that his characters have space to develop. You'll see this in Drive My Car. Don't worry, it's not as long as Happy Hour. Today's film is a minute shy of three hours. But it has a really similar, expansive pace. So that's my first signpost, pace. I like Kamaguchi's films because they don't rush you as a viewer. Some films grab you and drag you through a plot. Hamaguchi trusts you to make your own mind up about characters, about their motivations, what they're doing, what they might be feeling, what they might be hiding. In today's film, you'll notice that the opening credits don't actually appear until 40 minutes into the film. And this is an early sign of Hamaguchi's confidence. There is no rush. So I interviewed Hamaguchi earlier on this month, and one thing that I remember him saying is that he's really inspired by theater. And he said that many plays have this slightly longer pace, and we might expect to have one, if not two, intervals during a play. And that was definitely the case when Happy Hour was screened. Usually there'd be one interval. So speaking about plays and theatre, my second signpost is about performance. Nearly all of Hamaguchi's films are made over several months, if not a little bit longer. And his method involves workshopping very closely with actors day after day, many of whom are non-professional or are the first, first time on screen. The protagonist in today's film, Drive My Car, is a theatre director, but in a way we can see Hamaguchi inside this character. He's fascinated in his cast, in lines, in performance, in what's real or staged or what slips from reality into performance. Drive My Car is all about acting in a way. It invites us to think, well, aren't we all performing when we're performing our home self or our self at work or how we are on the street? What fascinates Hamaguchi are these troubled cross currents between performance and reality, art and life. So the protagonist today, who's a theatre director, and his wife, who's a screenwriter, are wrapped up in collaborations, let's say, on and off screen. And this is where things get a bit tricky. The third signpost is translation. 
In the film, you'll hear Japanese, Korean, Mandarin. Uh, you'll also see Japanese sign language. And you'll notice a lot of body language. Each person has their own set of gestures. This is where Hamaguchi is also brilliant, I think. His films are comedies of manners. They're highly attuned to gesture, gait, posture. Words that are nearly spoken, thought better of, swallowed into silence. Characters are often really placid on the outside and grappling with some kind of inner turmoil. Um, while I was doing my PhD in the States, Hamaguchi came for a year to join us at Harvard as a, a filmmaker in residence. And I'd see him most nights at the Harvard Film Archive cinema. I'd turn around and he'd be there also watching whatever film was showing. He, he was such a, cine, a cinephile, he loves film. Um, and I remember saying to him, Hamaguchi-san, how is it Jimaku nashi there? Mr. Hamaguchi, how is it for you with not having subtitles, not having Japanese subtitles? And he said, yeah, you know, it's interesting because if you don't have the subtitles, you start noticing so much more about someone's body, their, their gestures, what they're giving away, and also what the filmmaker is doing, what that filmmaker does with their pace or with cutting, this kind of thing. I thought that was really, really interesting to think about maybe how he's so attuned to these things in his own filmmaking. He's also very interested in translation um, between literature and cinema. So the film today is based on a short story by Haruki Murakami. And you'll also hear lots of references to Anton Chekhov's play, Uncle Vanya. We see actors rehearsing this play throughout the film. This is kind of significant, by the way, that it's Uncle Vanya, because that play was first staged in Russia, um, directed by Stanislavski. So Konstantin Stanislavski was this Russian um, theatre director who pioneered a method of acting when he got his actors to, to mine their own emotion and to put that into the portrayal of character, mixing their emotional reality with the performance. And what you'll notice in the film today is that when we see these rehearsals and we see the actors going through their lines, this becomes, the, the rehearsal becomes this kind of vehicle for emotion. And in the busyness of rehearsing, characters can actually have their emotions surface. So I use the word vehicle, um, and this is my fourth and my final signpost. I do mean vehicle in quite a metaphorical way, though, although there is a Saab in the film. It features very prominently. It's red in the film. It's yellow in the original Murakami short story. But more metaphorically, Hamaguchi often, often uses vehicles as a way to drive emotional expression. So what do I mean by this? Well, the protagonist in Drive My Car, the theatre director, spends much of his time being driven to and from the rehearsals. He gradually gets to know his driver. And the pair, you'll see his driver's quite taciturn in a way, the pair find it easier to communicate when they're driving. And what begins as this shuttle to and from rehearsals ends up taking them, well, I'm not going to give it away. <laughs> um, but the space of the car, the space of the open road, allows them space to get close but not be in each other's faces. They overtake awkwardness in the shared activity of a journey. The motion of the car allows them to express emotion. And when I first watched this film, I kept on thinking about these two words, motion and emotion. And in a way, this is a movie about being moved. In his other films, by the way, there's things like um, a cable car and a couple of um, escalators, which are also vehicles that drive really interesting narrative encounters and, um, yeah, sort of drive protagonists to do things. So those are some signposts or some entry points into the film. We're going to go from Tokyo south to Hiroshima and then far north to Hokkaido, and especially towards the end of the film, you'll see some really beautiful panoramas. And inside the car, you'll see lots of emotion. So I hope you enjoy the ride, and thank you so much to everyone online for joining us for this introduction.